Hello everybody and welcome to a physics first. This is going to be physics Netflix picks and this is basically going to be an episodic thing where I just talk about the best content available on Netflix. This will include films and series from multiple genres so yeah I really do hope you enjoy this new kind of idea if you do enjoy it please let me know down in the comments please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and want to support my channel so let's get started the first piece of Netflix entertainment I would like to talk about is the new Black Mirror this is um, an interactive movie uh, from the creator Charlie Brooker who is a genius behind Black Mirror the uh, series but this is something that uh, Netflix has never seen before, neither has any other streaming platform, I don't think, really. It's basically a choose-your-own-adventure movie. So, you used to get these books back in the day, which were choose-your-own-adventure books. So, you would read up to a section, then it would ask you, what would you do? If you wanted to do this, go to page something or other. If you want to do this, go to page something or other. So, you get sent down different pathways, which all lead to different endings and that sort of thing. So... Bandersnatch follows a very similar concept. Now, obviously, I don't really want to say too much about it because it will give away little details and I don't want to do that. But I will say you can have hours of fun with this. There are multiple different endings, multiple pathways you can choose, and I just think it is one of the most innovative and fantastic things you could ever come across. The general idea of the story is that it is about a developer who is trying to turn the book Bandersnatch, uh, the interactive text adventure, into a game Bandersnatch, a text adventure. There's a lot of time travel stuff, a lot of weird drug-induced sequences, a lot of LSD and that sort of thing. So if you like Black Mirror, you'll like it. There's no doubt about that. I think there are some decent performances in it. Only one kind of let me down, but I'm not going to mention that because I think you should just go into it without thinking about those kinds of things and you'll enjoy it a little bit more so that's Bandersnatch moving on this won't be in any kind of order these are just general things I enjoy finding on Netflix second I was second I want to talk about Fargo Fargo the movie by the Coen brothers and Fargo the series these are very similar, obviously, because the series comes from the source material, which is the movie. Um, Fargo is a Coen Brothers film that is just absolutely sublime. It is so well written. It is so witty and funny, yet violent and disturbing in other ways. I, I love it to pieces. Um, it is set up in Minnesota, and so are most of the series. So you have a lot of North American Canadian accents, which I like. It is basically about someone who gets in over their head with a group of very dangerous people trying to do something incredibly stupid. It's, it, it's great the way <laughs> that the, it plays out. There's not really any winners or losers. One thing I love about both the movie and the series is that you don't really have protagonists and antagonists. You just have lots of different people. You have relatable and sympathetic characters on both sides of the coin. So yeah, really enjoyable film. As for the series, I've seen the first series in its entirety and I just think it is wonderful. I will definitely say it's in the top 10 series I've ever seen uh, of all time. It's just fantastic. Instead of it being in the 90s, it's based in 2006 and follows a very similar storyline where you have someone, a very quiet, um, folksy kind of person that gets way in over their head with some very dangerous people and this person becomes more and more manipulative himself and more and more sneaky and I just think the way it plays out is fantastic it's incredibly well written instantly you have all of these wonderful characters that have such a depth to them as I was saying a moment ago you have um, both sympathetic characters on a uh, good side and the bad side, whatever that might mean. You don't really have that kind of thing, so you're going to be rooting for both sides and uh, you will be betrayed on both sides as well. And I think it's just fantastic. It's also very funny, but has its very tragic moments as well. So, that's Fargo. 
I've started watching season 2 and season 3, but I haven't seen enough to really comment on them, so that's that. Next up, we have The Sinner. I'm going to say that I've actually only seen the second series of The Sinner. I didn't realize that there were two series as I was watching it. I just saw that it was new on Netflix, so I thought it was a new thing, but it was actually a new series. This is a really, really in-depth and interesting sort of crime drama. I think it has some wonderful elements. It's got a big kind of culty theme to it it basically starts off with the parents of a kid who are murdered and then from then on it goes into exploring why and how this happened who this kid is the relation to everything and i think it's really good it's really good it's got some great performances it's got bill pullman in it and he actually does a good job when I think he's been dreadful in other things like Independence Day, I think he was just so cheesy and terrible in that. But in this, he pulls off a really subtle performance playing a kind of anxious, uh, depressed policeman. Well, hey, what's new with crime drama? But he does a good job of it. So that's The Sinner Season 2 anyway. I need to see Season 1. Next up. In the comedy side of things, we have It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, season 13 has just been added, so uh, I need to start watching that. As for seasons 1 to 12, this is one of the but most well-written, just simply hilarious comedies I've ever seen. This was introduced to me by my girlfriend Cassie, and I have never looked back since. I just charged straight from season 1 to season 12, non-stop through the whole thing, because I, I just... It's just so watchable, it's so enjoyable at any moment. As for what goes on in the co in the series, it's about some bar owners in Philadelphia, and it's just about the ridiculous antics they get up to. Um, you, in fact, have someone from Fargo in this. You also have Danny DeVito, who does just a great job. He only comes in from season two and onwards. These are some of the most uh, despicable, degenerate characters that you could possibly imagine. They're incredibly uh, selfish, narcissistic, sexist. But what I like is that this se this series explores a lot of those controversial things going on in the world. And now watching season 13, you can see how I would have missed some of the controversial topics going on at that time. So it's quite a topical um, series as well. I know there are people that dislike it, but I can't really understand why. I think it's incredibly well written. Uh, there are some moments when a character will do something crazy and there's not really a re proper reaction to it. If you're going to watch it for anything, watch it for the character Charlie. He's just brilliant. Uh, he's the most just weird, stupid character you could possibly imagine. It's just fantastic. You gotta give it a watch. You really do. So, next up, we have Ozark. Ozark is Breaking Bad 2.0. This is about a pretty regular guy uh, who launders money for a Mexican cartel. He gets in a lot of trouble from the get-go um, and then basically has to rebuild his trust with this cartel and things go on from there. He ends up moving to the Ozarks with his family and it's a weird blend of, you know, a very normal family and incredibly dangerous criminal activities. So it that's why I say it's Breaking Bad 2.0 because if you enjoyed Breaking Bad there is no doubt that you will enjoy this. I think this is one of the best series going. It stars Jason Bateman as the main character really um, and he you may recognize from Arrested Development and it's very weird considering I had just watched Arrested Development before I started watching Ozark so I have been very used to him as an entirely comedic character. So seeing the changeover into him being in a very serious role is weird, it's very odd. So if you've seen him only in Arrested, Develop uh, Arrested Development, you might also find this a bit strange. That's Ozark, next up we have. So next up we have Devilman Crybaby. This is one of the most 
insane anime series I have ever seen. It is up there with the greats. It really is. It is so overtly sexual and violent and disgusting and horrifying. And I think it's utterly brilliant. It's about s someone that is a very uh, sensitive and emotional person that ter gets turned into a devil man, which is half demon, half human. And this is one of the most bizarre characters you can imagine because it's a, a de devil man crybaby. That's exactly what it is. Um, so it starts off in the most insane way possible. It's just incredibly violent. It's about trying to clear up demons from this town. And I think it's just spectacular. It has one of the more interesting art styles I've seen in an anime. It's very colorful, very vibrant. There's a lot of motion going on in it. Um, you've got to see the anime running in this. It's just <laughs> absolutely bizarre. But if you're up for something that's a little bit more hardcore, then you will definitely enjoy this. So, um, finally, we're going back to movies now. We have a horror film called Apostle. This is just a, a very enjoyable film. I'm not going to say that it's like great or anything because I don't think it's great. I just think it's pretty damn good. It's a um, Wicker Man-esque story of a guy going out to a culty religious group to try and get some answers. I think there are some really decent performances, but there are some also incredibly over the top performances. Got some <laughs> rather violent, gory parts, which I always find enjoyable. And I think it plays out in a really interesting way. I think you should definitely check it out. I'm not gonna say too much because there are a lot of kind of mystery elements to it and I wouldn't want to ruin anything. So that is my first physics netflix picks i hope you've enjoyed watching i really do these are some really decent series and films i really recommend you checking out next up we're going to be going more into films than we are series because i've been talking mainly about series today but yeah i hope you've enjoyed if you have let me know down in the comments please do leave a like and subscribe if you want to help support me and my channel thank you so much guys i will see you in the next one take care now